Sometimes our pattern, it calls for walkovers, trotovers, or lopeovers. Do you ever do it and your horse kicks them all or doesn't rate, does the incorrect gait, maybe even doesn't center, misses them all? Those are all a bunch of common problems that we all face. And in this video, I aim to help you guys out in addressing as many of them as I can. Hi, I'm Johnny Flores. Stay tuned for this video to get some tips. So a big uh, problem that I tend to see is transition, specifically rating down before the poles. So say your pattern calls for a trot and you have to rate down and then do your walkovers. I have some set up over there. What tends to happen is you say, hey, horsey walk, and the horse goes, huh, no. And you end up trotting through a walkover area and it is much too small for that stride and everything just kind of sucks at that point. So with a horse that you know may end up failing at this, at the rate and end up trotting over the poles. You can go up to it and I'll, I'll do it right now and ask for the rate. Always try to ask as if your horse is finished to the highest degree and he's like, perfect. Give him a chance. You never know. He might surprise you. And if he doesn't really rate, then manually bump him and get him to stop. And this is a drill. This isn't a, a stop necessarily. So I'm not saying ho oh, and I'm not making my feet all big. I'm saying, hey, pay attention, listen, okay? Look at the poles, snap out of it. And then I'll go over for the rate. Now, eventually the horse will learn to listen to the rate first because it's a much, much lighter cue, much more subtle cue. And he'll end up doing the poles. Oh, well, he kicked that one, but our transition was good. So what is my body doing exactly when I'm rating? Uh, with a good horse, I kind of try to break it down into what my head is doing what my hands are doing, what the whole rest of my body and my butt is doing, and what my legs are doing. So ideally, my head is up and looking. I have a bad habit of looking down. A lot of people do. Just try your hardest to look up. Your head weighs a lot, and if you look down, you end up getting over their shoulders. Um, and as far as what I'm doing with my hands, I'm just very, very lightly gathering the reins. And I'm not visibly moving my hand like this, gathering the reins. All I'm doing is just I have a very loose grip over my reins and all I'm doing is just tightening my hand and that'll gather the reins maybe an inch or so and that should be enough to get him to rate. With my body, I'm trying to get heavy, but not so heavy that I'm gonna cue a slide stop. And I try to think of like a little, little sigh, not a big, oh, but just a little, huh. and then my heels, my legs, I'm trying to imagine that I have a string tied to my spur and it's pulling my heels down. Not as much as a stop, just a little bit, just a little bit more. Put a little bit more weight down and I get just a hair heavier. So if he'll let me do it right now. Well, we're not the most centered, but that cue, all those cues together help him learn, oh, okay, yeah, we're slowing down, we're slowing down. And that whole getting heavier and looking up, it helps to keep me back and keep me down and it'll help to keep his butt down just as you want any horse to work. So with horses that get off center, like he did in our last clip, uh, there are quite a few reasons why that might happen. The biggest reason is because the rider sets their horse up and they set them up off center. See how I'm not pointing at that red mark? I'm not centered. That pole is kind of cut, so it's a little off center now, but yeah, I'm not centered here and my horse is not gonna be centered, even if he travels straight as an arrow. The other reason is because the horse doesn't respect your legs and just kind of goes wherever he wants, or he doesn't respect your reins. You have your reins over here and he's going that way. And that's actually a common picture I'll see a lot. So if you're, if you're going around and you're set to come over a pole and you're, oh, your setup is perfect, do it. But if your setup is over here, maybe just stop, say, sorry, horsey, turn around and try again, give him a fair chance to succeed. But when you're actually going around and trying to keep your horse centered, that might be really hard. And the way that I'll do it a lot of times is try to make myself like a hallway. I'll try to tighten my thighs a little bit, my knees, the way hunter jumpers will when they're, when they're jumping. And I'll maybe squeeze a little with my calves, might tighten the reins, not to be harsher on his face, but just to make a little bit more contact and pick them up so the reins are a hallway and really say, you only have this one way. And he tried to fight. He tried to push into my leg a little bit and I had to push him back. 
And that's another thing that you can do. There's a lot of leg yields, a lot of side passes. If you can get your horse soft and moving off of your legs, you'll be able to fix your problem as it's happening, which when you're showing is more than often going to be uh, the case. I'll go around one more time for you guys. Maybe you didn't set up too good and your judge is over there, so you can't use that foot to push him over. And so you're going to just kind of try your hardest oh, and see that little bit of leg movement was able to fix my problem as it was happening. Another thing that uh, I actually really like about riding in a two rein is that if he's just not getting centered and my legs aren't fixing him and no matter how much I set up, he's just messing up, I can really still work on his neck rein and getting him to stay in between my reins. Some horses, that's the entire problem. I'm gonna drop the spade first. The spade isn't really much for correction. And I'm gonna hold the bosal or bosalita, whatever you wanna call it, like this. And I'm gonna hold it nice and wide because I want it to be very obvious to my horse. I'm gonna walk towards you a little bit. And I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put the neck rein on him. And see, I'm putting the neck rein, it's saying go right, go right. Okay, you're good, buddy. Oh. And what I'm essentially doing is I'm moving the neck rein off center. And then when he finally, moving the neck rein off center, Oh, and then when he goes into the middle of it, I'll release and stop putting pressure. So pressure, no pressure. And that'll help him get used to staying in between the reins. And it's a good idea to work on this because sometimes your horse might only have their problem in the reins. And by isolating each cue, helping them with the reins specifically, the leg specifically, you can help to have a better rounded or more well-rounded horse. So all the things that I discussed in this video, all the different exercises, they all kind of have a common denominator of the horse hitting the poles or tripping over them or otherwise touching them. And ideally the horse needs to really nicely trot over them or lope over them without kicking them and have their feet in between each of them. Um, in every association where you have walk, trot or lope overs, kicking the pole is a point deduction that is subjective to the association. So. One of the reasons why they tend to kick the poles is because they're not really paying attention. And I'm not really gonna ask him to pay attention here, so you might get to see him mess up. Or not, we'll see. Oh, he paid attention there and he actually kind of looked down and he picked up his back, which is very strange for this horse to be completely honest. But what tends to happen with horses is they'll, they'll be like, Ah, oh, it's a beautiful day, but I like the sun and the clouds. Oh, what's that? Hi, horsey. And they're not paying attention to what you're doing, especially young horses. Um, you might actually see them visibly look around. And so one way to help fix that is by kind of collecting the horse, framing them up, and then letting go just before. He still kind of kicked them. That's okay. We'll just do it again. Collect them before and let go. He's kicking them mostly because these are set at a trotting distance, but I'm doing them at a walk. The other way, oh, is to stop right before, it's to stop right before the pole. What that does is it makes the horse think, oh, there might be something here, something's coming up. It creates something of an anticipation for the horse. And he'll end up picking up his shoulders and he'll end up engaging his butt and be just a little bit more collected than he would have been otherwise. But for a horse that's not really listening, oh, I would do that. And unlike the first exercise where I would stop without the courtesy of a hoe, I'm trying to make him stop. And I'm trying to make him put his butt down and pick his shoulders up so that around here, he's like, I might have to pay attention. And then that attention, he'll look down and be like, oh, holes. And then he'll pick his feet up and he won't hit them. Another common problem is barreling through. Uh, the horse just runs through like a juggernaut. He'll kick poles, he'll trip over poles, or maybe he'll step over two instead of stepping in between them as a horse should. And it's just a wreck. And sometimes you could see it coming, sometimes you don't. And sometimes after the, the poles, the horse will end up bolting. And in the case of something like a ranch trail, where it's pretty tight, that can be uh, pretty scary. So the way that I would work on that with a horse that I don't really know if he's gonna do it, I'm gonna go wide and try these lope overs over here. As I'm gonna just see where we're at. Now this horse has a lot of problems with poles and I'm purposely using him to display problems instead of showing you guys a perfect horse. Right there, his problem was raiding down and anticipating, but he didn't bolt, so that's good. 
Now if a horse, oh, now if a horse were to bolt, if I were to see it coming and I had a little bit of time, maybe a few strides between me and this pole, I would cue a stop and I'd bump kind of hard on the reins and really just say, you need to stop. And that pole might make him really stop, similar to how reiners will fence their horses to get them a really dig. Um, at the very least, it'll drastically slow down the horse and you'll be able to work on them a little bit easier. Another thing that I might do is if the horse barrels through the poles and well, there's nothing I can fix after that, I'll clear them and I'll give myself some space and I'll stop the horse and I'll back them up. Okay, the horse wants to run out. That's fine, now you need to stop. If you could stop, okay, cool, then we'll move on. But if he fails that, then we'll work on, then we'll work on stops. The other thing that I might do is come out of it and put them in a circle. Some horses, when they're put in a circle, they uh, don't like it, especially this one. He's already switching his tail. And especially when they're going really fast, it's hard on them, it's hard on their body. So I'm gonna tell the horse, okay, you wanna run fast like a maniac? Well, that's fine. You're gonna run in a circle and you're gonna tire yourself out. And most horses will end up slowing down. And if they don't, you kind of spiral down and really turn the heat up on them and make it a lot harder on their body. And a horse might be disengaged and their butt running out and it might not be pretty but the horse will kind of learn that going fast only gets them more work. And the final thing that I would do is come out of them. I would come out and I would just kind of turn and casually try to rate a little bit and maybe manually bump on him, work his face a little and get him to rate. But that's for a horse that only lightly speeds up. We're talking horses that generally like bolt after it. And those are just some basic fixes that I'll do for a horse that barrels through the pole. The final kind of problem is actually a human problem, the rider problem. And uh, I like those because those are much easier to fix than a horsey problem. And what it is essentially is the rider quits riding. And this is something that I've had to work hard to really instill in myself to do. So say you're going over the walkovers, you're kind of looking, you're looking, you're like, whew, I did it. Okay. And he did them perfectly. Ah, no, he kicked one, kicked one at the end there but I, I stopped riding. I was like, oh, he did the first one. Okay, we're in the clear. And another way that people will do it is they'll go, I don't know if they'll kick it, maybe he won't, but they'll kick that first pull and they'll go, oh, damn it. And they'll just kind of like, oh, that sucks. And then their horse gets off center, does whatever he wants. And they just, they quit riding. They don't stick through with it. But continuing to ride, continuing to have that forward motion, that point to point and uh, that purpose will transfer to your horse and your horse will walk with purpose or trot or lope with purpose and hopefully pick their feet up. <laughs> Basically guys, just try to find the horse's problems, try to diagnose where they're, where they're lacking and go work on it. When you work on it at home or the barn or whatever, don't go and try to work on lope overs with 18 poles. Don't try that. Just try with one pole. I have one pole right in front of me. If I'm having problems with four poles, I probably have problems with three poles and I might have problems with two. So by working on one, it keeps it simple. It helps you so that you can actually do it and you feel successful. And then your horse feels successful instead of having a grumpy, a grumpy grouch on top of them. And it also helps keep things simple and builds your horse's confidence. Remember to try to ride your horse as if he's gonna make the right decision. Thank you guys so much for watching.